Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Scorpio <laughs> in mid-December 2019. What's going on, Scorpio? How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well, eh? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Anyway, guys, how's everything? Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. Happy Kwanzaa. Season's greetings. All that good stuff. Uh, I am eight days out from Christmas, so uh, for those who have already celebrated their holidays, I hope it was a fabulous time. If you're watching this before you celebrate Christmas or New Year's, I hope you have an amazing time with your friends and family, people you know and love and who care about you and who you care about back, and I hope it's just an amazing time, yeah? Why am I being so weird with you? What is that about? <laughs> you're the fourth reading I'm doing for the mids. Um... They've all been fairly serious or, you know, I've just kind of had a standard intro with them. But with you, I'm just like, <laughs> which is weird because I, I only do that for certain people. I usually do it with Pisces. So consider yourselves lucky. Honorary Pisces, maybe. I don't know. Doesn't matter. All right, Scorpio. I have shuffled off camera. That is your main spread there. I'm going to shuffle on camera now for your outcome and your overall energy. Once all the cards are out and they're lined face up on the table, that's when the reading begins. You can check for that timestamp in the description box below if you choose to jump ahead. Also down there is the information you need if you want to get a personal reading with me. If you have a question before you place an order for a personal reading, just go ahead and email me at the same address and I will answer you post haste. This is a huge flip. I'm obviously not going to read all those cards, but here we go. You had the High Priestess turnover in my hand. So some of you know something. And you're not saying it. Some of you are keeping secrets. Some of you are learning secrets. Some of you are listening to your intuition. Some of you are listening to your intuition and then telling that bitch to shut the fuck up. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. That was like... What they... Okay, listen. Here's what they really like gave me. How I got that really quickly was they were... You know how like... For those of us who are old enough to remember like a house phone, like a landline, right? Story time. <laughs> and someone would call and they asked to speak to say you, Scorpio. Hey, this is Joe Schmo calling. Can I speak to Scorpio? And somebody in your house is like, hey, Scorpio, Joe Schmo's on the phone. And instead of going to tell, you know, you had to tell someone like, no, I'm not here. Like, mm. you know, and what they showed me was the high priestess is calling you. Your intuition is calling you and you're telling someone else, tell that bitch to shut the fuck up. I don't want to talk to her right now. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> but that's a long way of explaining just a quick image. You know, I, I'm not going to bore you too much longer. We're going to get into it. But Scorpio, a lot of times I just get like a fragment of a thing. And I can tell you like a 10 minute story about it. That's how this shit works for me. It's crazy. And it hasn't always been that way. But as I get further into this, as I do my meditations and do all the work I do to enhance myself. It gets easier. Uh, the last reading, my guides were on it. So let's see what happens with you. Back to you. <laughs> so that's the main spread. We're going to get your outcome and your overall energy right now. Okay. A uh, quick announcement before we actually get to that. See, I'm delaying myself again. I'm not going to go live for the collective in December. I'll do that in January. Be on the lookout for that. Okay. That's just the general thing there. Let's stop the dilly dallying. Let's get into it. Scorpio. Outcome for Scorpio in mid-December 2019. Scorpio's outcome for mid-December 2019. Please show me. Mm. Mm, come on. Chunky. Come on, man. You're having a similar thing. Capricorn in the shuffle. Outcome. Wow. Strange. Oh shit, come on. <laughs> Outcome for Scorpio in mid. Thank you. Bottom of the deck. Oh, shit. Is the overall energy. So that's the outcome. I don't know what this is. Let's just look at it. The hangman. Secondary major for Pisces. Funny. I said maybe you could consider yourself an honorary Pisces. But um, I'm not really sure why this is here. I'm going to remember it. I want you to remember it. He showed up for some reason. The hangman. I'm going to put him on the bottom. 
because they're not telling me to put it on top of the five. So it could just be a random card that flipped. But this is going to go here and it's going to be flipped immediately because it's the only one that came face down. Say what? Scorpio, what you doing? What are you doing? And what am I doing? Messing around with the cards here. <sighs> All right, let's get into it. Scorpio. Hi. <laughs> Please show me where Scorpio is in mid-December 2019. Please show me Scorpio in mid-December 2019. Please show me. Mm. All right, we got it. Very nice, say. Hey. Scorpio, coming in to mid-December, you come in with the Six of Wands. Say what? Aren't you feeling good? Hmm? That's wonderful. Happy to hear. Uh, six of Wands, you feel victorious. You feel rewarded. You feel lauded, appreciated. Feeling as if you've earned something, you've won something, the tides have turned in your favor. It feels like um, after a long time of waiting, after a long time of putting in effort and time and blood, sweat and tears, whatever it is, you finally, pardon me, you finally get your dues. You finally get what's coming to you in a good way. This is comeuppance but comeuppance isn't traditionally associated with good things but this is come up in the bad excuse me in a good way um for many of you maybe like more close to 50 50 let me see yeah they're 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 like almost like down the middle for some of you this was a waiting game you were waiting for something you were waiting for someone you were waiting for whatever to unfold to transpire to expire oh mm. and it's not the milk you were waiting to, for to expire <laughs> um but whatever so half of you it feels like we're waiting for something the other half and not to say the first half you were like lazy and you did nothing but the second half you were more like proactive and you had to like actually put in work it was like not passive the first group let's say passive waiting and passive second group you know, more active and moving towards or, or, or putting in work. Yeah. Now this could be your job, career, finances, love. It could go, it, it runs the gamut because, you know, wands are about what we're passionate about, where our attention is or where our, mm, in, mm, yeah, our intentions are like what, is going to give us fulfillment, what's going to, to, to make us feel proud, to make us feel accomplished, to make us feel loved, or be able to express our love, whatever it is, it, it's going to run the gamut. And that's not traditionally what the five, what the wands are about. You know, it's, it's, it's usually a little bit more concise. I feel that because it's a general, it's going to apply across many different areas of your lives or, or realms in your life. Yeah. Regardless of what it is, you are so damn happy. Good for you. It is, again, even across both groups, it's a long time coming. Because if you put in, let's say you put in an application for a job, right? And you put that shit in a month ago. Sometimes HR be like that, right? Take dragging their damn feet. At least where I work, they do that. Oh, stupid. Anyway, <laughs> so... Sometimes it's like that. You applied for something, you asked for a loan, whatever it is. You filed the paperwork. You did what you had to do or all that you could do, right? You're waiting for other people, other other systems at play to do what they need to do to get you the result, the six of wands, that you want so much. So you apply for a job, you ask for a raise, you ask for a loan, whatever. Your boss, the HR people, whatever. They got you in, in, the, in the circulation, on hold, in it pending in the pending area for a month month and a half two weeks three weeks it doesn't matter so that's a quote-unquote long time coming right for the first group the passive group the second group maybe you've wanted something as well but you've had to prove yourself along the way or you've had to like have you know check-ins or or pits not pit stops but check-ins yeah so progress reports there you go something like that 
So maybe you've been moving towards launching a business or maybe your your career is fundraising and, and you're working with certain nonprofits or certain areas and you've wanted to hit a goal and you're with your, you know, field managers or, or office managers and you're you're having meetings and you're getting progress on how they're doing two weeks into it. How are they doing 15 weeks into it, whatever. And now it comes to December, 2019, maybe you have a huge luncheon or a banquet on your, on your calendar. And you want to prove to the people who you're beholden to your bosses, your higher ups, that this project is a success, that this, this is the, how much we raised towards our goal. We exceeded our goal. But again, that was work and effort put in step by step by step over a long term process after process after process that eventually ends with you being able to stand up on stage or present in a PowerPoint or do what the hell you're doing that says we exceeded our goal by 15% where blah, 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 blah in the, in, in whatever. I, that's not my job. I don't do those things, but you see what I mean? So both groups of Scorpios have had to wait it out and fix sign energy. Scorpio is not into waiting. It's very annoying. <laughs> Um, to say the least, it's very annoying, but when you get to this moment, it kind of, it makes the suffering quote unquote suffering. Cause we all have different un understandings of what suffering is, right? Uh, but it makes the suffering worth it because you get to this moment where you're recognized or you, you win the prize. You, you get the <laughs> moving on. Uh, you get what you wanted. After a long time, I got what I wanted. Um, that feels good. Uh, <laughs> see, and they're like, some are not going to feel that way. Meaning some of some of you are not going to be like, oh, it was worth it. Some of you are going to be like, no, they made me wait too goddamn long. They should have told me that two weeks ago. Or I should have been able to report back to my boss that we were in the, you know, in the, in a good profit margin, you know, four weeks ago, but because Sam had to take a vacation over Thanksgiving, I had to wait, you know, it's like that. <laughs> a little, a little indignant, some of you with that six of wands, regardless, you're in a good spot. You're in a good spot. Yay. Okay. This is turning. They say this turns. Why? Okay. Um, it's similar, but this is going to now take a turn. To some of you, it's a left turn because you're just like, no, I don't care about that. But others of you are like, yes, tell me more. <laughs> this is taking a turn in the sense of, I think now we're going to, well, they're, they're like, you're talking it up. Just get into it. So you're in this good position. You continue to be in a good position with this Nine of Pentacles. So this is still you, Nine of Pentacles energy. Yeah, single ladies energy. Okay. Whether you're a single lady or not, it doesn't matter. This is about self-sufficiency. This is about independence. This is about feeling like I can do any and anything I want, whenever I want, beholden to no one. And again, those of you who are people's bosses or you have your own bosses, it's not to say that you're going to walk in, you know, put your letter of resignation on the desk after you just got hired or you just got promoted. No, that's not what this means. It means how you feel about yourself, how you present yourself in the world how you show up to work. Yeah, I am, I got four bosses, let's just say that's you. And that's ridiculous, but some people have that life. Let's say you have four bosses or four people that you have to report to, right? You don't walk in there with misery on your shoulders, fearful and, and anxious about, what's Steve gonna say? What's Barbara gonna say? Oh my God, I hope Michael doesn't show up to my office. Oh, he, he's, he's really expecting a lot from me. You're not worried. Nine of Pentacles is not fucking worried. Nine of Pentacles is like, I got it all within myself. I'm capable. I got it all in terms of money. Okay, here it is. For some of you, this has been about money. Again, either through getting a job, getting uh, hired into a place, being, being promoted, something like that. Or some of you were, I said that shit and I didn't know why, but here it is. Listen, um... Some of you were waiting for a person to expire. And now that they have condolences, number one, but now that they have, you have access to money. Listen, I don't sense it's like some cold black widow type shit. I don't sense it's cold hearted energy. I just think it's 
oh, here's the upswing of this person departing my life is boom. I get their life insurance policy. I'm sensing like a husband wife situation. Um, maybe like parent and child, you know, beneficiary, whatever it is. And, and again, condolences. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Because I, I expressed that there for like 15 minutes or however long I was talking about. It. It's a long time coming. This person didn't die yesterday. This person has been gone for a while. And now you have this money. And you're not dancing on their graves. In most, in most cases, I'm not feeling that you're, oh my god, you're, they're finally dead. Yes, now I can get the, that life insurance. No. You have, you have mourned. You feel the loss. Many of you are still grieving. But here's the upswing. I got an additional $80,000 in my bank account now because of a payout. Most Scorpios I know, eighth house, house of other people's money. Hey, hey, look up your look up your chart or excuse me, look up your your houses and know know some of the some of the meanings. Eighth house, house of other people's money. Thank you, husband or wife, grandparent, whoever. Thank you for this gift. Essentially, is how this feels. Hmm? Again. I don't want to make light of anybody's grief. I don't want to make light of anybody's loss. But that is a big upswing payout in cash or direct deposit or whatever. If you're if you're old fashioned, you get the check in the mail. You're like, oh, look at all those zeros. Hmm. Now, that's where the single ladies thing came from uh, before for some of you. You were married. You're now widowed or, or, or widowed or a widower. Thank you. For the males. Um, cool. Others of you, this is like, you know, an in increase in your, you know, income from your job. Now, the thing which I was talking up, but now they've kind of pulled it back, but now they're coming forward is like, here, now you can talk about it. See, that's probably why, because I had to talk about the money first. Because that was more tied to career or, or lifestyle or, the, or this feeling of coming into something. Here's the next part. There's something here about, <clears throat> hmm, how can I say this? Oh, my eye is bothering me. Sorry. Thank God you can't see me on camera. Number one, my hair is doing a thing. I'm experimenting with my hair, so it's a good thing you can't see me. But if you could see me, you would also see that my eyes are like watering. And I hate that because they do it around this time of night. Anyway, <sighs> Scorpio. There's a bit of a complication here. I think many of you feel confident in who you are as a single person, as an individual, not a single person. You could be married or dating or whatever you're doing. You could be solo for 10 years or solo for one day. It doesn't matter. Um, but a lot of you feel super confident in who you are. And that is really what you're in love with right now. Mm, get it. That's what you're in love with right now. Yourself. Congratulations. Everybody should be in love with themselves says the Leo. Because hmm? <laughs> I truly believe that. If you're not in love with yourself, pff, come on. What good are you to someone else? Hmm? <laughs> so a lot of you are coming into this energy of being in love with yourself. Whether you're attached, whether you're single, it doesn't matter. Think outside the box here. You love yourself. That's new energy. Both of these are new energies, no matter how you slice it. Whether we're talking introspection or we're talking money in the bank or we're talking new job, whatever. You're in love with yourself. This is new. This is great. The trouble here is whether it's new money, new, new outlook on life, whatever it is, there's a hitch here where I feel empathic. You're worried about that falling apart. I would say... Whenever that happens, get that thought out of your head immediately. Nothing between these two cards tells me that you're on a track of, I don't want to say failure because that's, no, that's a little too much. But I, I would say you're on track to sustain what you have accomplished, to, to sustain what you have achieved what you've been awarded or rewarded with, or what you are developing for yourself. Do not worry. Somebody out here is fucking worried. Don't worry 
about this ending because it won't. To some degree, it won't. You know, it just won't. I can't, I, I'm not going to sit and explain for each scenario that we've talked about thus far, but I feel as though if you maintain this, ah, that's the thing. Nine of Pentacles, self-sustained energy, abundant energy, right, of the material world, money, resources, things that you value, your possessions, time, all that kind of stuff, things that you value, yeah? This energy sustains that and maintains that. That's the power of the Nine of Pentacles. Does it with, I said that about this whole walking into work and you got four bosses to report to. You don't walk in with worry and, and anxiety on your shoulders. You walk in knowing, I got this. Whatever they need from me, even though this is a high stress job, even though, you know, I could, you know, choke at least two of them out right now and not blink an eye, whatever. You go in there knowing you're equipped to deal with the mess. You're equipped to deal with the bullshit. Your own and other people's. This nine of pentacles does not doubt themselves. Whoever needs to hear that, because nothing else on the board. Oh, there it is. They're like right there. They're like, okay, and there it is. That's the worry. I'm like, why is this worry coming across here? Which we talk about that at the end. So we'll just go ahead and put a pin in that. So you're in this nine of pentacles. You feel, you feel fly. You feel accomplished. You feel amazing. What else happens? Good shit. I can tell you right now, good shit. Get it, good shit. Come on, ace of cups. Yeah, buddy. New opportunities, new new offers. Hey, so new job, new offers. In terms of ace of cups, traditionally talking about love and emotions, we'll get there. They're like, mm, put it to the side. Talk about the other things first, because I feel a good majority of Scorpios are like, ah, tell me about my career. Tell me about my life. Tell me about my stability. And like, secretly, those people also care about love, by the way. <laughs> but the smaller portion that are here strictly for love is, is a smaller portion. I'm going to say like 60% are like, tell me about myself and my stability. What can I do to, to make me happy? Parentheses. And then tell me about love. <laughs> and, the, and the smaller portion, 40, maybe even 30% are like, tell me about love first and then I'll worry about my stability later. So it's like, anyway. So for the first bigger group of Scorpios where you're like, uh, me, 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 my life, my security, my stability, my money, you're good. This job you got, the influx in your, in your money, the increase in your savings, whatever it is, <clears throat> pardon me, is going to open up many doors for you. Creative doors, doors where you can be emotionally fulfilled. For some of you, like, again, for, 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 this is just an example because I don't think it applies to everybody. But what they're showing me with the whole, you got a, an insurance policy payout. I'm sensing like retiree. Like they're showing me like older couple, one of the partners dies. You get this influx in money due to the insurance payout, right? And now with that money, you wanted to move to Cancun and live there for the rest of your life. Whether that's another 10, 15, 20 years, whatever. There you go. That's the money that gives you that opportunity. Again, I, I called it a gift, did I not? A gift from your from your dearly departed spouse or family member. Yeah. It allows it it frees you up. This gift of money, this this new job with more money or more opportunities to spread your wings, because that's the other thing. Some of you have put yourself in a position at a at a job where not only have you been promoted or you've moved or you've transitioned to a different department or you've transitioned into something that then opens two or three other doors down the line, right? Down the line. Opportunities, gifts, and emotional fulfillment comes from that. Again, for this first primary group, you want to feel stable and secure. It's something, something is inside of you that says that's going to make me happy. Okay, cool. You're on the track to be happy with your job, with your finances. Perfect. Yeah, they're reminding me why. Okay, thank you. Um, because you've come from a place of instability in terms of your finances and your career or whatever. Yeah. Second group, smaller group, but still, it's still related to the first group. But I'm telling you, this first group, <sighs> there are some of you who are just like, ah, don't tell me that. And I'm like, I'm, I gotta tell you, it's here. 
it's here. Second group, this is more your primary focus. Something about love and relationships of all types. So don't get, don't get all excited. You know, if you're a single Pringle and you're like, oh my God, I mean, you know, some of you, no, it's not about that. Love is love is general. Yeah. Um, if you want to know specifically about a certain person, you'd have to reach out to me. But in terms of love, friends, family, lovers, whomever, there is more. And there's, okay, there's someone. An offer is here. Now, whether that be a friend or anything else, family member or anything else, well, never mind. <laughs> you, the second group doesn't believe, thank you, doesn't believe it. Too good to be true. Ah, here's, okay, that's, <laughs> Scorpio, I got you. Always ever suspicious, Scorpio. Always suspicious. Always looking for the next thing. The next thing. Looking between all the lines. This. Digging, 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 digging. What's the truth? What's the truth? Further, further down the rabbit hole. Yeah? Or whatever. <laughs> this love offer, or even, even back to the job. Too good to be true. Even back to the insurance payout. That many zeros? My my husband, my wife was just this. This is how much they give you the policy? Are they, you know, you can't believe your eyes. I'm telling you, believe them. So in the second group where it's like more love focused, this could be a reunion with someone that you've been estranged from, family member, friend, lover, it doesn't matter. This is, this is a, I don't want to use that word, but they said a promise. And I don't know about promise because, again, whoever I'm reading for, you're suspicious. Promise. Pro <laughs> <laughs> promise is like a dirty word to a Scorpio. Promise. Because you don't trust other people. Because you're suspicious of their motivations. You're suspicious of their capabilities or you doubt their capabilities. So in terms of people making love offers to you, in terms of people trying to build relationships with you, in terms of people turning around and saying, I fucked up, I'm sorry, and I want to make amends with you, and they say, I promise, you're like, ha, you just slandered, sir or madam. You just said some bullshit to me. I'm telling you, with this and this and this and this, trust it. But you don't have to listen to me. I'm just the anonymous pair of hands on the internet. You don't have to trust me. I'm telling you, this is solid. And that's the thing about aces they're solid but they're only chances you know i told you you going into the new job opens two or three doors that's down the line if you just got into a new job you just transferred you just got promoted whatever they're not going to offer you a new job or you know say you're in track to make partner or whatever two days after you start the new job no you have to prove yourself over time you have to be in the right places in the right time you have to make the right connections you have to you know show your worth and then you will see down the line that those two or three doors are open to you or available to you. That's the ace. They're seedlings. You put them in the ground, you water them, you take good care of them, you sing them lullabies, whatever, and then they sprout up. And then they grow into beautiful bushes of bountifulness, right? And abundance and, and fulfillment or whatever else, yeah? So this whole thing of me saying promise or this thing of me saying it's a sure bet, you're just like, ha, 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 I don't think so. Well, duh, it's not going to happen the next day. Someone comes back and they apologize to you. I promise to do better next time. We'll see. Yes, you will see. That's what I just told you. I promise the next time. The next time I do this or the next time we get invested in that or the next time that you need this from me, I'm going to show up and give it to you. You're already skeptical at just the offer. You're skeptical at the prospect. Natural Scorpio tendencies. I don't blame you. I'm just calling you out. Feel called out. <laughs> feel called out that's a joke between me and my pisces friends because me and my pisces we always like exchange text messages and call each other out it's funny anyway uh so this ace of cups no matter how it shows up in your life scorpio i would say trust it and the reason i say trust it even though see but that falls in line with everything i just said page of wands underneath this could be the person 
offering you the Ace of Cups. Fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. They don't have to be a fire sign. If they are, congratulations. That's a synchronicity. That's a hit. If they're not, don't worry about it. It's a general. Page of Wands energy. Here we go. Pages have been coming up a lot in all the readings, I think. You're the fourth one. It's either three of them or all four. You've had pages come up. And pages are novice energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Immature in the sense of inexperienced. Um, yes, get it. Mm. This is someone who is either new to you or new to the scene, new to the environment that you're in. So this could be, let's say you are put on as a manager. This could be a new underling. And that's a terrible word, but I'm going to go with it. An underling of yours. They don't have to be younger than you. The, the age of the person is irrelevant. But this person has new, fresh, green energy. Hmm. That don't, that's, that's alarming to some of you. You're like, ah, no, 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 no. I need to work with or I need to be with people of experience. Trust me, this works out. You know why? Because the Page of Wands is the most impassioned and earnest. Well, maybe not earnest because maybe the Page of Pentacles is more earnest, but definitely the most impassioned, the one that wants to get the job done and get it done right. This person, again, they might use this word promise. I don't know about that. I don't like using the word promise as a personal choice, but I know people use it. Should you trust that person when they say I promise? I think it's a good shot that you should. You don't have to, you know, but I feel what this person intends towards you, towards the situation you both are involved in, whatever it is, that you can trust them, that you can rely on them. That's it. This page, out of all the pages, cups, swords, pentacles, and wands, this page is the most confident, so confident. And a lot of you are like, I can't do shit with confident, Jay. I'm telling you. You need this. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. What do you mean? See, I'm, <laughs> I end up having like these interesting conversations with myself because I just said what you would have said to me. And then I'm going to challenge you with what I told you earlier. Look at this. Who was confident? Who did, who needed a boost or who needed to be ri reminded to stay in a, in the lane of confidence? You, I said, you need to not doubt yourself. You need to be cool with your glow up. You need to be cool with this with this new position of independence and balance and structure in your life or whatever you've earned in your life. Some of you are like waiting for that shit to fall to pieces. You need to be confident that you are capable and that whatever you've accomplished, whatever you're moving towards, whatever you have obtained for yourself will be there. This page, I don't know who they are. I don't know what they are, but they feel the same way about themselves. Hmm? Let me tell you something, two confident people in any sense who get together, make shit happen, buddy. Hmm? If you think that this person or you are not capable, you're already defeating yourself. Hmm? If you think this person is blowing smoke up your ass, doubtful. If you have history with them, I could get it because I feel some of you know this person already. This is like a round of, roundabout. This is somebody who uh, returns or who has returned to your life. A friend, old family member, someone you used to work with, whatever. This, In a dating sense, I'm going to say that. For those where this is dating and romance, I feel like you're not? This person doesn't... Mm. That's like the smaller harsh portion of returning people bigger returning people family second biggest co-workers or people from you know maybe you like went to college with them and now you work in the same company something like that and then the third group the smallest group is this oh no and the, and the second group also would include friendships this fourth and final group feels like maybe it's someone you dated before but years ago long time ago this is not somebody new Who's returning to your life and you're like, oh, I don't know. Anyway, yes, look at that. See that? What's behind her? Oh, damn you. Voila. There we go. Dragon. Now, I didn't watch that show, Game of Thrones. I'm one of those people who never saw a damn episode and I don't care. <laughs> 
But that dragon, who's, I don't know, I don't know her name, but whoever is like the queen of the dragons or whatever, I feel like what I generally know about that show is she was kind of a little eh in the beginning, like she was maybe a little weak, maybe not as developed by the end of that series. I feel like she was supposed to be a bad bitch. I could be wrong. I never watched the show, but that's kind of what they're leading me to. The one with the blonde hair and whatever, the dark eyebrows. That always bothered me. I'm like, why she got dark eyebrows? But whatever. I didn't watch the show, so it didn't bother me that much. Now, that's what this is showing me, that this person is growing into this queen or king or whatever of this dragon energy, this very ferocious monumental i'll go with monumental i don't know how to express what i just felt uh but this monumental energy this person is again pages are growing into they are on the road on the path to developing into knights queens and then kings right so this person in time develops into this very masterful person energy boss boyfriend girlfriend it doesn't matter and that is based on the seedling of the ace of cups let me tell you something I'm on it tonight. If this gets five views, I don't even care. I did well for five people out there. Scorpio, trust it. That's all I'm going to say. Trust it. Out Come on. Outcome. I'm all getting ready to go into the car and I'm like, trust it. The chariot. Hmm. Now, cancers have been a big player tonight. I don't know if you have cancer in your chart or they have cancer in their chart. I don't know if they are cancer, but... And, and Cancer's reading is not really aligned with what's going on here. They had a very tumultuous, well, maybe. If you've had a tumultuous situation with a Cancer, maybe watch it. Anyway, Cancer, major Kana card uh, associated with them is Chariot. Trust it. You're moving on. You're moving full steam ahead. Whether you're veering to the left, veering to the right, going straight down the middle, it doesn't matter. Be the driver of the Chariot. Don't give the wheel or the reins to anybody else. Not even me. Not even me. If everything I said sounds like bullshit and you want to sit in self-doubt, if you want to mistrust your own instincts, if you want to, you know, you know, dig and 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 dig all the way to the other end of the earth, all the way to the to the core of the earth to try and find the truth of a situation because you're trying to catch somebody in a lie or you're trying to to suss out whether you can actually rely on someone else, you can do that. You do not have to listen to me. But whatever you do, do it with some boss-ass energy. Do it with some boss-ass intentions. Boss, boss, potential bossing energy. And this person, this is not you, they also are potential boss energy. Hmm? So, Chariot, charge forward with confidence. Chariot is about making decisions. It is about, you know, sort of being mindful of what you want and going for it or what you don't want that is uh are we that no ah okay that's what we did because scorpio you're gonna have the longest reading thus far because i always talk so much with you guys now um this is about you know yeah steering towards things that you want and avoiding things that you don't want and and knowing the difference knowing the difference uh the chariot has a lot of clarity for you so however you find clarity talking with friends you know listening to oprah's podcast i assume she has a podcast i don't know if she does um you know going into your kitchen making some bread going to meditate getting into a salt bath going for a run going for a hike whatever you need to do to clear your head to really get in touch with what you need in the core of you because you're in this space where you, we started in your reading of, I know I've worked hard, I've waited patiently, and now I'm seeing myself elevate, be awarded with, come into some type of recognition or feeling of accomplishment. And this is about sustaining that upkeep on it. How do you do that? You have to be clear and make these decisions from a clear-headed space. Not influenced by anybody else, even Jay, here on Empathic Fire, okay? I don't doubt you. You doubt you. Whoever whoever you are, no offense in, in my tone, 
But whoever you are, stop that. Like, I, you know, as empathic as I am, and I'm not the most empathic person, but as, sometimes I'm like stuck. Because I can feel it, but I can't articulate it because I don't see the reason. And that, uh -huh, that's it. I don't see the reason because I don't know all of your histories. What I'm feeling is a smaller collection of, of Scorpios in, in whatever group you fall in, group A, group B, or whatever I was talking about earlier. There's a small collection of Scorpios that have something gritty. This is, yes, like a pebble in your shoe. Thank you. I, I, talk, I used to talk about that more often, but a pebble in your shoe. First of all, that's a cool song by Ella Fitzgerald. Go listen to it. It's really old, but I love it. Um, it's like a pebble in your shoe. You ever walk and you get a rock in your shoe, sand in your shoe, whatever, or something pokes you on the bottom of your foot. You sit down or you stand against the wall. You take your shoe off. You shake it out. And you're like, okay, my shoe should be good. You put the shoe back on. You walk a couple steps. It's poking you again. You take the shoe off again. You're looking inside. You're like, come on, what's going on? There's, that's what this is. There's something that re reoccurs in your life, whether that be a personal uh, issue, like a personality issue, whether that be an issue with your health, an issue in your family, an issue, whatever. There's something that comes back around and pokes you in the bottom of your foot that doesn't allow you to walk very confidently down the avenue, doesn't allow you to just glide through life. There's always something that comes around that pokes back at you and that causes this self-doubt, which I feel, but I cannot express other than pebble in a goddamn shoe. Whatever your pebble in the shoe is, I hope you're able to work through it. I hope you're able to identify it. I hope you're able to handle it because I feel it's a pebble. It's a damn pebble. It's not a rock. It's not a goddamn switchblade. It's a pebble in your shoe. You can handle it. And if not, well, never mind. I'm not going to get into that. It's a pebble. That is relative to this to this analogy. It's a pebble. Meaning, oh, see, now they're countering me. They're like, yeah, it's a pebble. But pebbles, like I was just describing, can be hard to find because they're so tiny. Can be hard to dislodge because they're so tiny. Okay. I'll take that. Thank you, guys. I'll take that. Because they're like, mm, it's not that easy. And I'm like, it's a pebble. It's small. Of course it's easy. No, it's not. It can be hidden. Right? It could be like, you know, shoes are just material. So they could get lodged in, you know, the side of the shoe. And you're like shaking it out. And it's just like, it's lodged in there. It needs to be like rooted out. You see it? You guys get, you guys are following me. I'm, I'm confident that you are. Now, your overall energy, which I said we would pin. And I don't, oh, what was this? I forget what it was. Poverty? Is that what I mentioned? Anyway, your overall energy is the five of pentacles. Ah, I don't think I use the word poverty. And I'm not comfortable using it. I mean, some of you may have come from, you know, economic poverty of, of a type, of a, of a certain mm, consideration. But more so, this is uh, insecurity, I'm going to say. And that's not the word I used earlier. That's okay. It's still, it still flows. Overall, here's your damn pebble. Hmm? This five of pentacles. Feeling like, believing that, not having the, 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 ability to see that you are not this if you are familiar with the traditional depiction of the five of pentacles what it normally depicts is two people out in a snowstorm on crutches similar to this on crutches right outside a snowstorm from a church outside of a church churches especially in the time period that is depicted on the card are sanctuaries you can go in there day or night and get out of the cold Mm -hmm. So the problem, as is indicative with this being a five, the problem, pardon me, is surmountable. Fives are challenges. Fives are about changes. We are due to have some type of metamorphosis, some type of development in our lives when we come across the fives, no matter which one it is. Yeah. This five of pentacles, you're changing in your physical realm. You're changing in the realm of your stability, in your finances, hmm? in your value system, some of you. That's deep. That's a deep cut for somebody. In your value system for some of you. Your perspective. Ooh, get deep. Go ahead. What else? Mm, your identity. Say word. That's deep for somebody. Mm. Worldview, perspective, and identity is changing. Hmm? Deep cut for somebody. That's like for one person, two people, maybe. 
So five of pentacles, we're changing these things financially. We're changing these things in terms of what we believe either about the world or about our community or about ourselves, right? We're changing if we're talking about making connections with other people in work, in love, reconnecting with friends or family members, it doesn't matter. We're changing how we approach that. Don't approach it like you are walking on crutches, my friend. Get the pebble out of your shoe or walk fucking barefoot and go about your business. Listen, I'm not going to preach. Because, you know, I'm not religious and I was never, you know, told I could. But I'm, you know, I don't, I don't want to sit here and ramble to you all night. Um, I think you get the meaning. This is your overall energy. I think this is the pebble in your shoe, the thing that that is in the back of your mind that 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 supports and feeds your self doubt. And I would encourage you to challenge that. If this if this was not a a general, I would clarify that because I don't know what the solution is to this. I don't know if there's just some work you need to do on yourself. I don't know if you need the help of others, mentors, professionals. I don't know what you need, but you some type of infirmary, some type of disquiet that needs to be addressed because all of this is working. This is the problem. I'm done. I'm done. Scorpio, I'm done. <laughs> That's your reading for mid-December. If you liked it, like button is down below. Go ahead and hit it. You can leave a comment on the video. Let me know that it resonated in your life. If it did, if it did not, that's okay. It's a general. You don't have to, if you sat here the whole time and it didn't resonate, I don't know why. Anyway, <laughs> um, you can share the video. Let other people know that you like my stuff and that it spoke to you and that you kind of like my vibe. Cool, cool, cool. And of course, you, if you are not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe now. If you like my stuff and you want to keep seeing it, make sure you hit the notification bell. Uh, Scorpio, I'll be back soon with the no communications readings. That's for those who are in no communication with a certain sign. So if you, Scorpio, are not in communication with, say, a Gemini or a Sagittarius or an Aquarius, you would watch that reading. If you are dealing with another Scorpio, you could watch the no communication with Scorpio reading if you choose. Um, I'll be back with those soon, hopefully before the end of the year. Uh, after that, I'm going to come back with the January monthlies and then the mid monthlies. Again, I'll go live for the collective at some point in January. Don't know when though. And then, yeah, that's pretty much all you have to look forward to. Again, if you're subscribed, make sure you hit the notification bell. Make sure you tell, uh, YouTube that you want to see community posts as well as videos. That way you can see when I am going to set up my live times. Okay. All right, Scorpio. This was a great one. For me, I don't know if it was for you, but this is a great one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, I thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Take care.